Following the process, we set a reasonable range for three parameters and pick some values within that range. Then if we plot all the value combinations, this would come out looking like points on a grid. Hello, welcome to part 2 on hyperparameter tuning. In this video, we're going to talk about grid search, including what it is and how to use the scikit-learn grid search CV module. In this module, we're going to dive into some important fields that you might want to customize, instead of just using the default settings. And these are going to include the scoring method, CV splitting method, and how to choose the best set of hyperparameters after fitting the grid search CV. Timestamps will be listed in the descriptions below. And without further saying, let's get into some learning. A grid search, as its name suggests, searches for the set of hyperparameters from a given search space that optimizes a predefined loss function, so either minimizes or maximizes whatever metrics specified. The search space is going to be different combinations of hyperparameter values you're tuning for. So a question we must ask ourselves is, what values for each hyperparameter is going to make up these combinations? And the solution is that we handpick a range of values that we see as reasonable and pick values based out within that range as candidate values for each hyperparameter. And this is where the picture of a grid comes in. Imagine if you're tuning for three hyperparameters. For example, the number of estimators, max features, and min sample split in a random forest. Following the process, we set a reasonable range for three parameters and pick some values within that range. Then if we plot all the value combinations, this would come out looking like points on a grid. Based on a high-level explanation of how it works, we know there are three things we need to predefine before starting a grid search. First, obviously what hyperparameters we're tuning for, and what are some reasonable ranges and values to pick from that range. Second, what metric are we using? And third, how do we determine if one set of combinations outperform another? We'll see how all these pieces come together in the scikit-learn grid search CV. To use the grid search CV module, there are two required parameters. The first is estimator, which can be any model that you choose to use for your problem, as long as it implements the sklearn estimator interface. Note that these doesn't have two modules within sklearn. For example, the XGBoost library also implements this estimator interface, so you'd be able to use sklearn's grid search CV for an XGBoost model. The second required parameter is a parameter grid, which is what defines the search space. Then to specify the metrics we're using, there are a number of built-in scoring functions in sklearn, such as accuracy, F1 score, precision recall, and there's a whole list of commonly used metrics here in the documentation. I'll leave the link to this page in the description below. You'll also find links to the respective equation used to calculate these predefined scoring metrics on this documentation page. To use one of these metrics, you just need to set scoring to the name of the predefined metrics. If you want to use a more exotic metric, sklearn also supports self-defined metric functions. An example of how to implement this is shown here in the documentations. You would define a loss function as a regular Python function that accepts a list of ground truth and a prediction list, then compute and return the score based on your custom metrics. Use the makeScorer function to make this custom metric a scorer object, and you'll be able to use this object as the scoring metric. These are just the basic ways of getting started with a suitable metric. There are also other interesting ways to play around with the scoring metrics that you'll be able to read more in details in this documentation. The scoring parameter is optional, so if you don't specify it, GridSearch CV is just going to default to your estimator score method. Now that we have a search space and a metric, how does grid search CV actually determine if one set of combinations outperforms another? This is where CV comes in. CV stands for cross-validation. What happens in cross-validation is that the entire dataset is going to be split into k number of test sets. Say we have CV equal to 5, then the dataset will be split into 5 equal folds, and each fold will take turn being the test set, while the respective other 4 folds will be the training set. Each parameter combination in the search grid is going to be used to initialize a model, and for each fold as the test set, this model will be trained with the four other folds so that at the end, each parameter initialization can be associated with five test scores. We'll take a look at how this works with the simplistic example that sklearn provides. So here I'm just copy and pasting the example from the grid search CV documentation page. First, we're going to import the libraries. 
For this example, they're using the IRS dataset, which is a very simplistic dataset that gives us five features describing a flower and asks us to classify which of the three related species of the iris flower a particular example describes. So we'll load the data directly from the scikit-learn datasets. Then for the model, they're using support vector classification. The two parameters that we'll tune for in this example is kernel and C, where C is a regularization term. And we'll define the search space so that we only explore models with kernel type linear or radial basis function, and C being either 1 or 10. We don't have to understand what these parameters mean to understand this example, because the parameters in search space are going to be specific to the model you choose that suits your problem. The search space doesn't have to take all possible values for parameters you tune for. There are other types of kernels, but you can always save some search time by eliminating parameter values that you think aren't promising. Then we'll just define a grid search CV, pass in our model, the parameter search space, and here I'm setting CV to 5. Then we'll fit the data. The CV results will come out as something like this. And to read this, we'll first look at params. This shows us all the combinations of hyperparameters that the grid search tried, as well as the order of which they're used. This order is important because all the other scores will use the same order, if we take a look at the shortest mean fit time. It comes out as the third parameter combination. So that ties us back to the parameter combination with c equal to 10 and a linear kernel. The split test scores 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the respective scores of each fold as the cross-validation test set. And as a summary, we'll also get the mean test score, which just takes the averages of different test folds. These will also be given in the same order as the combinations in params. If we output the best parameters, the grid search CV module is going to, by default, give us the first parameter with the lowest mean score. However, in some cases, you may want to customize how the best set of parameters is picked. For example, if your search space is larger, maybe the top 100 parameter combinations all give similarly good results. And at that point, maybe you want a parameter that is more stable across different test folds. So out of the top 100, you can pick the one with the lowest standard deviation in the test scores. Finally, we're going to take a brief look at how you might want to customize the CV parameter for your specific problem. The default CV splitter is k-fold, which splits the dataset into k consecutive folds without shuffling. If your estimator is a classifier, this default is going to be a stratified k-fold, which splits the dataset into k-folds, but is going to preserve the class percentages in each fold. What that means is, say if we have a binary classification example, and the 0 to 1 class ratio is 1 to 2, then with the stratified split, you'll end up with a 0 to 1 class ratio of 1 to 2 in each of the split folds. You can also use another CV splitter. Here's a list of all the built-in splitters. In some cases, you may need these instead of the default splitter. In a time series, you might not want values in the future to ever be the training set for a test set with values in the past. So the time series split will ensure all test folds are after the training folds in terms of time. You can also specify what indices are to be considered as the train set and test set respectively. So that is going to be it for this video. I'm planning to make one other video on grid search to talk about how to manually implement this with Python, just in case for whatever reason the customization that best suits your problem isn't built in sklearn. And also in the next video, I'll talk about some advantages and disadvantages of using grid search as a transition to other search methods. So hopefully you find this useful. As always, stay safe and happy. See you next time.